Alright, so this is just the last bit of those binomial notes, a few more examples of that. And um, in this case we're going to look at combining things a little bit, so we have to remember some of our skills from probability. But here, looking at this, 3 out of 5, New Zealanders will be dumb enough to drive drunk at least once in their life. A group of 20 friends, find the in a group of 20 friends, find the probability that half or more will drive drunk at least once in their lives. So, these stats are kind of just made up, but um, let's look at it. 3 out of 5, well, that kind of rings to me like a probability, like it's likely that 3 out of 5 people will do this, so I'm going to say my probability is 3, oh, 3 out of 5. And you can put that into your calculator, find that 0 0.6. And then in a group of 20 friends, remember with binomial we need to get binomial x, n, and p. So in a group of 20 friends, that's going to be our trial, and that half or more will drive drunk. So n is equal to 20 here, and this is what we're going to get our x out of. So out of 20, half of that is roughly 10, so if I think about 9, 10, 11, 12 people, if I want half of that group potentially to be driving, taking that risk, that's going to be the 10, and half or more <coughs> is going to be more than that. So half or more includes half at 10, oops, and the dot always goes not to the right, but to the left of the line. Remember this is going to be a 1 minus problem, because I'm looking for everything above the line here. So I'm going to say 1 minus the binomial C, because it's a range of values, 9 comma 20, comma, 0 0.6, and again I'm doing 1 minus because my calculator will calculate everything below the line, but I need everything above the line instead. So when we do that out in the calculator, remember it's menu, stat, distributions, binomial, cd, make sure yours is in variable, not list, right, not list, but variable, go on to x, 9, we have 20, and 0.6. Okay, so I get 1 minus 0 0.1275 and that happens to equal 0 0.8725 as an answer. Okay, so the next one here is in three independent groups. So three independent groups so each group has 20 friends, but there's three different groups, like a group from Kashmir, a group from Rangi, and a group from, I don't know, Lincoln or something like that. Three different groups of friends. What is the probability that at least 15 of each group will drive drunk at least once in their lives? So the first thing I need to think about is that I've got to find the probability for one group. So for one group, I'm going to look at at least 15, well, around 14, 15, 16, at least 15 includes 15, and is everything above it, and the dots to the left of the line. So that's what I'm looking for here. And again, it's going to be a 1 minus, because it's everything above the line. That's BC, 14, comma, 20, comma, 0 0.6. That's going to be 1 minus, um, In this case, 14, 0 0.8744, and that's going to be equal to 0 0.1256. So this is for one group. So one group has a probability of 0 0.1256 of having at least 15 of the people in the group drive drunk. Okay. So if I want to think about this for three groups now, I need to think about what's happening here. So what's the probability that group 1 has that happen, and group 2 has that happen, and group 3 also has that happen? So you should be thinking about that word and and probability means times. So here we're looking at group 1 and group 2 and group 3 all being the at least 15. And how I would write that might be something like this, the probability that x is at least 15, so greater than or equal to 15. 
for each of these people, each of these groups, and since the groups are independent, that means the probability stays the same for all of them. So basically, that becomes 0 0.1256 times 0 0.1256 times 0 0.1256, or you could write that as 0 0.1256 to the power of 3. And that ends up being 0 0.00198. So when you've got more than one independent group, you figure out what the probability is for just one of those groups to have that happen. And if it's the same thing for all three groups, you can just times it by itself three times, or do it to the power of three. So this is more like a Meredith type problem, a higher level problem. But again, if you have independent groups, our independence comes through from probability, so the probability of those things happening all together is just timesing those invents together. So if we look at the next question, in a class of 120 students, what is the expected number of students that will drive drunk at least once in their lives? Remember, expected value, that is just the average, if you want to think about it that way. Or the mean, an expected value. It's what we'd expect to see if everything just kind of worked out like probability predicts. So the expected value, the symbol again is an upside down U, called a mu, and we get that by going n times p, the number of people, times the probability of it happening, which we said 3 out of 5 of them do that, so that's 0 0.6, and that gets us 72. And our standard deviation, that symbol there, formula for that from the other side of the notes on this page is in p and q, so that's the square root of 120 times 0 0.6, times 0 0.4 because q is the probability of it not happening, so if it happens 0.6 of the time, it won't happen 0.4 of the time. And my answer for this one is 5.37. Sorry, that's a bit all over the place, but my expected value is 72 and my standard deviation is 5.37. And I should probably label that 72 people. Okay, next example. If you want, good time to pause the video and try it on your own, see if you get the right answers. But if you need more uh, help, let's go on with it. The factory produces toys for dogs. They make stuffed sheep with a squeaker inside of it. One in twenty of the squeakers is defective and makes a fart sound instead of a squeak sound. What is the probability that in a standard shipment of ten toys to a pet shop, one or more of the squeakers is a farter? Okay, so one in twenty that's my probability, so I know that my p is 1 in 20. Now that's also equal to 0 0.05 if you put it in the calculator. In this case, I'm looking at a box full of toys. So you've got a box here, and we have 10 toys inside of it. That's what we're trialing. And one or more of the squeakers is the farter, so that's our x. So if we think about 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 10, but I'm not going to write them out, possibilities here, where all 10 could be farters, or none of them could be farters. One or more, so that includes one, and is everything above it, and my dot goes to the left of the line. So here, again, since I'm looking above the line, this is going to be a 1 minus BC, 0, comma, 10, comma, 0 0.05, and again that 0 0.05 comes from 1 divided by 20. So if I do this, figure out what that number is for us. Here I've got a 0, 10, and you can always do this 1 divided by 20 just straight into that part of the calculator as well if you're not sure what it is and it will work it out for you. And here we get 1 minus 0.598 uh, 8 and that's going to be 0.4012, roughly. So, um, the probability that I have one or more farters in a shipment is that. Okay. What's the probability that there's a maximum of two? So what does that mean? If I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, a maximum of two means no more than two. So two is allowed, but I can't do anything more than two, so it's everything below. Dot's always to the left of the line. So I can just do this one directly. That's BC. The dot is on 2, 
out of 10 in a box with a probability of 0 0.05. Put that into our calculator. Um, here I want 2, 10, 0 0.05, so 0 0.9884. And that kind of makes sense. They're, they're saying here, well, sorry, 9885 technically if we round better. But they're saying here, you know, if I only have a, you know, 5% chance of getting one that's a farter, basically, a 5% chance that one of them is a farter, the fact that out of a group of 10 I don't have more than two of them, that's a pretty good chance. It's saying it's not very likely, so it's more unlikely that you'd have actually two of them together in a box that are going to be farting. Okay. Last question here. What is the probability that in two shipments made to a pet store, at least one shipment has one or more farters in it? So this is what we were talking about above, where we have more than one group. So here we've got shipment one and shipment two. And I want to know the probability that at least one shipment has one or more farters in it. So let's think about what at least one shipment means first. Well, that means that I could have shipment one with a farter and shipment two with no farter. Or I could have no farter in shipment one and a farter in shipment two. Or I could have farters in both of the shipments because I'm looking here for one or more farter in it. So the opposite of one or more would be none. So either I've got one or more, or I don't have any. And at least one means, well, I could have just shipment one, or I could have just shipment two, or both of them. And so in probability, again, if we think about that, that shipment one, that's that shipment one is a farter and shipment two is not a farter, so we times those together. Or that shipment one is a farter and shipment two is not a farter, we times those together. Or shipment one is a farter and shipment two is a farter. So we times together the groupings that we need and add up, add them up as we go along. So again, this is a higher level problem, but first thing we need to think about is just the basic probability of having one or more farters in it. So the probability here that x is going to be greater than or equal to one. And that again is this idea here, one, two, three, that I am including one or above it. So my dot's on zero. And in fact, we just did this right up here. Exact same thing, dot's on zero, everything above. So I'll write it out, but you don't need to if you don't want to. Zero comma 10 comma 0 0.05 is what we'd put in the calculator. One minus, because it's everything above the line. And that was equal to 0 0.4012. So that's the probability of a farter. So one or more farters. And if we need to figure out as well, because I have the farters, I need to know what the probability is of no farter. A couple ways we can do that. So the probability of no farter is this, and that's the probability of um, 0, 1, 2. That's just 0. So you could say here BP, 0, 10, 0 0.5. And this is going to be equal to 0 0.5988. And that's for no farters in the box. But keep in mind that these are complementary, because <coughs> you can see that you only have two options here when you break it up that way. There's the one or more, and then the only other bit of that is zero. So these things add together, actually. So you could have just calculated it, recognizing that there's the 0 0.598 that you got earlier, and that the 1 minus gave you the number for one or more farter. But if that's confusing, just think about calculating them out each. But now that we've done those two numbers, we can calculate our probability. So again, if we want to think about diagramming it out, we thought we'd have a farter for shipment 1, and a non-farter for shipment 2, or a non-farter for shipment 1, and a farter for shipment 2, or a farter for both shipments. So <coughs> if we write these out, probability of getting one or more farters is 0 0.4012, 
times the probability of no farters, 0 0.5988, plus the probability of no farters, times the probability of a farter, plus the probability of two farters together. So that's 0 0.4012 times 0 0.4012. And if we times and add all that stuff up, we get to 0 0.6416 as our outcome. So um, that's the way this problem works out. It's similar in the fact that if I've got independent groups, I can times the probabilities together. <coughs> but here, because they're not all identical, I think about, have to think about how they all actually each work out. So it's helpful for me to think about what are the possible outcomes here for one or more shipment. And then once I know what that is, I can just calculate the probabilities together, which is slightly different than what we did up here with the three different groups, because each of those had the exact same probability. Down here, I've got a couple of different combinations, so I have to do them all out individually. So um, give a go with some of the problems in your workbook or in Stats LC, and um, yeah, good luck.